What's up guys? I had a bit of a disaster today and uh, I'm going to explain that in another video. But uh, in the meantime, I got a really good one for you guys today. It's something that I filmed last year and it's more like a tutorial guide. It's going to really inspire you guys today. So let's go with this one. And this is day 60 of the 100 day challenge. Enjoy. All right, guys. So this is me on the left here. It, it's basically me when I was uh, not the best player. And then me a few years later, training at a, a top Dutch club. And this all happened in a, a space of a relatively short time. And it it spurred on what ended up creating training effective. So I'm going to get through it. Let's start with when I was 11, 12, about 11 years old. This is me crying. It's not really me crying, but it, it looks like me crying. And it was because I'd just gone to a tryout uh, for my under 12s team. And they told me that I wasn't good enough for Division 1. So in Australia, where I'm from, I'm from Canberra, Australia. Canberra is the capital of Australia. In Australia, you have a pyramid like this. And this pyramid, for all you guys uh, and girls watching, it's going to look pretty similar. But, you know, it's all ranked based on divisions and state and national. It's going to look similar to where you are. Um, when they set up, I played in Division 2. This is a pretty average, you know, like... They know who Messi and Ronaldo is. Maybe they don't know who, you know, um, Luke Shaw is. Like, it's that, it's that kind of level, right? So when they, I love football, I love playing. When they told me I'm, I'm in this league, I thought, oh, okay. I'm, I'm just kind of a bad, like sort of average player. And, and that's where I am. Um, and if you look at where I'm from in Australia, this little bubble you see on the right is like a very small area of Australia, the population is not as big as the other areas. So you've got all these pyramids in Australia and, you know, I'm, I'm not there. I was just kind of average player, local player that you see. Um, and sort of that's just how it was. <laughs> when, um, when I was about 15, 16, I picked up a book and you guys can put in the chat if you've ever read this book. But it's a really good book. And if you guys are taking notes, which I really recommend you do, Please, after this call, order this book because football, sports, life is all about, it all starts with the head, guys. It all starts with what you're thinking in your head and you can only go as far as what you think in your head. You'll never exceed what limits you put onto in your mind. So it's, it's important that when you're going for your goals, you're thinking as big as possible. And I picked up this book when I was about 15. It's called The Magic of Thinking Big. So in your notes, make sure you order this. After this call, make sure you order this book or during this call, what do you want to, whatever you want to do. Um, and I, I thought to myself, all right, I'm 15. Like, what do I want to be? Like, what's my biggest goal? What's my biggest dream? Because I'm 15, I'm 16. What do I really have to lose? I got all this time ahead of me. I want to try and think of the, the most exciting, um, fun, cool thing I could I can do. And when I started thinking about that, because that's what the book asks you. It asks you to visualize what you want to do. I'm like, all right, I want to, I want to walk out the tunnel in the in the big like big stadium. I want to um, play in front of a big crowd of people. Um, um, even smaller things like, and you guys probably see this in training videos and stuff all the time, where the players are just in the dressing room, and you think to yourself, well, oh, I'd love to be part of the dressing room because you're playing football for a living you're with other players that are very good players like this is your life and and the dressing room is a part of that like i'd love to be in that dressing room with sharing it with top players um i would love to go in the boot room with like my boots are there like ready like i can just go up my boots i want to play on the best pitches like with top coaches the best best equipment there is just all these little things I thought about, I was like, oh, I really want to be a part of that. I really want to do that. And so I, I really started thinking about that. And I had this moment, I said to myself, okay, I want to become a pro. I want to try to become a, a pro player. I'm 15, 16, never played at an academy before, never played at any top clubs before. I'm your typical sort of Sunday league player. That's it. Um, and so I started this blog. You guys can still find this online. It's a, a blog at nickhumph.net. If you ever want to look at this blog and see what I was writing about when I was much younger. Um, I would write this blog and, and I would document weekly about my journey, about how I was feeling, what I was doing, my training, all these different things. And 
I didn't have um I didn't have a whole lot of uh let's say talent didn't have a whole lot of you know good skills but I did have desire and belief I had this desire that I wanted to go test myself and I had this belief that if I could go work and work like maybe something good will come out of it so I created my first training schedule this is a screenshot this is the actual schedule of when I said to myself I want to try and become a pro so I would be like Monday running with a ball choose you guys can look at it through here Monday this is what I do Tuesday Wednesday this is what I try and do just like just to get a little bit more more practice in a bit more training I'm sure a lot of you guys have, have created um, something similar to this in your past as well. And, you know, in my blog, I post like educational, like motivating videos I've found. This one is like still one of the most inspiring ones I've, I've seen. So put this in your notes as well. It's called Will's Wisdom. And you can just like uh, look at it up in the, the mentality section of the, um, of the Train Effective app. Um, you guys should be able to find it. It's called Will's Wisdom. So make sure that's a note for you, yourself. But I started like working, started training a bit. Uh, a few months passed. And then I reached out to this guy called Mark. Basically, I, I reached out to like hundreds of teams. Or I found the emails of all these teams. I found every one of these teams. And I like, I found these emails um, to get in contact with the academies. Because I wanted to test myself. I wanted to see how it goes. So AFC Wimbledon, which I'm sure most of you guys know. Um, AFC Wimbledon was one of those that replied back to me. So I shot off 100 emails and one or two replied back to me. This was Mark Robinson. He's the... At the time, he was the academy manager at AFC Wimbledon. He sent me an email like this. He sent it out to a bunch of people, but he said, guys, um, if you'd still like to trial for AFC Wimbledon, please ring me. So all right, I gave Mark a ring. And just before I get into that, I gave Mark a ring. And yeah, I, I flew out to England. I flew out to Wimbledon where the training facility was. And um, I, I did all right, but it wasn't good enough. Mark told me, I wasn't I wasn't good enough and I had a few training sessions with Wimbledon I thought I've been training for a few months so I should be good but it wasn't like that I could see that these people were on a, on a different level but instead of getting discouraged because you, you guys on your journeys as long as you play football as long as you do sports as long as you aspire for anything in your lives there's always going to be challenges and downs and most of the time you're going to fail most of the time you're not going to make it to the club uh that you want to make it in most of the time you're you're just it's just not going to happen so what you got to do in those situations is always evaluate and reflect okay why didn't it work out this time and what i did in that time with wimbledon instead of saying look i've been training for a couple of months this is not working out i'm going to quit now i'm not, I'm not going to play football anymore i said to myself no nah, this is part of the journey this is I know this is going to be a long road and I just want to get better every day. So I asked Mark, you know, what are my strengths and weaknesses? What what do you think I can do to um, that I'm doing good? What do you think I'm doing bad? And Mark listed these di different things out like, well, Nick, um, I can see like your one touch when you're playing one touch. It's not sharp. It's not as sharp as these other English players. And these English players, you could see that academy level one, two touch, very sharp. But I didn't have that. I didn't have that. So I thought, okay, that's a weakness. Um, Mark said that's a weakness. All right, cool. Second, speed on the ball. Mark said I, I didn't look very quick on the ball. I thought, okay, I didn't look great there. Strings, he said, oh, your shooting is top notch. Very good shooting. Um, you're in and you're, uh, you, you pick out the right pass. He says things like that. So I said, okay, this is what Mark thinks I'm good at, what Mark thinks I need to improve. I thought, all right, Mark, one of the th things Mark said is that, I need to improve on my one touch, two touch passing, and I need to improve on my speed on the ball. So I thought, okay, when I go back home, I'm going to improve on those things. I'm going to, I'm going to work more on wall drills, one, two touch, boom, quick. Um, I'm going to, going to work on the speed of play. So I'm going to focus on releasing the ball quicker in my team trainings. I'm going to think about what I'm going to do before I get the ball. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go home, but great. I have things that I can work on at home. Nice. So I thought, okay, I need to step it up. At that time, while I was like going through that, as I got back home, um, I, I read this book called Outliers. And guys, again, please take notes with this. Make this another note. Make this a thing that you order or you study more after this academy session. Make sure you read this. It's uh, called Outliers. And um, 
again, it's a book about how a lot of top people in their field, how they actually became in the top. So, you know, like how top hockey players like got to the very top. And basically this guy named Malcolm Gladwell, who's an author, he's like, he basically comes comes across this conclusion where all people that became world-class in their field practiced or played deliberately for at least 10,000 hours. So this is called the 10,000 hour rule. Okay. So about that's about 20 hours a week. If you do the 10,000 hour rule math, okay. It's about 20, 20 hours a week for 10 years where an athlete, a, you know, a person playing chess, a musician, um, anyone that became world-class, like top 0.1% in their field, it was like 10,000 hours. Okay. And it got me thinking, got me thinking like, okay, well, all right. If you're under 5,000 hours, you're probably mediocre over 5,000 hours strong 10,000 hours are really elite. Okay. You're the, you're the best in your field. And I thought to myself, okay, like if I think about this training schedule that I have, well, maybe it's like five, six, seven hours a week. If, if I look at top academy players, top, um, top players that are becoming world-class, they are training that 15, 20, 25 hours a week. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm doing this training, but I got to step it up. I got to do more. And this is where I was like, all right, my new challenge, I'm going to train 20 hours a week. I'm going to step it up. I'm going to go more. So this is me. Literally, I, I used to film some videos of myself just looking at my technique and stuff. This is me when I was like 16. I'd like go to the field. I'd, um, I had this really nice field near my house. And I'd just go and, and like train, train, train. You can see like this, you can see the trees here, guys, for the seasons. I think this is like winter or fall, autumn. And then this is in the summer. Uh, I just go and train. This is in the snow, guys. All right. When I say I hustled, I really hustled. Like this was the garden. Parents didn't want me ruining, ruining the garden, but you know, I had to do what I had to do. I had to, <laughs> to train in the snow before training. I had to do whatever I could to get more touches on the ball, more deliberate practice. Uh, fast forward, you can actually see, like, I think this would be later on after that snow. Like, I, I like, with all the, um, like, the pocket money that I earned, I'd, like, buy all these cones, buy, like, the rebounders, <laughs> like, buy all this stuff I could in my garden. If you can see in the right, that's, like, a, a table, like, a wooden table, which I'd use for a wall um, to get more touches, more dribbles, more training, more practice, so I could get this 10,000 hours of work in. And... Basically what happened, guys, after about 12 months of doing this, 20 hours a week, boom, 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 I set myself up for more trials. And I thought to myself, all right, I really practiced, really prepared. I got a lot better in the space of this 12 months. I really put my mind on this, right? And, you know, when you're working for something for nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months, and you're putting your all into it, you have these expectations of how you're going to perform, how you're going to go. So what I did by the time the spring spring came around, I, I found these different trials, open tryouts you could do. You guys have probably seen open tryouts before. They say um, you go to this open tryout, like a, some scouts will come or some coaches will come to evaluate you. I basically set myself up for three of them. And at April, in April time, just to give you um, a, a like rundown of the times, I had this trial. And in the April one, I did poorly like so poorly i think we we're playing a 45 minute match um and i lost the ball about 10 times like my confidence was so below so down so down guys on this trial i thought to myself what that what the heck is happening i put all this practice in all this training i still lost the ball so many times like what is going on literally the coach who was uh running this camp he said to me after he after the game everyone was kind of eating and then he's taking off everyone, uh, everyone to the side for a few minutes. He, he's kind of talking to you one on one. And then um, I think this guy's name was Danny. Danny was an experienced coach. He said to me like, Nick, yeah, yeah, I, th I saw you. You put effort into this camp this week. Yeah, you know, um, Nick, like, what, what, um, what do you like? What are your hobbies? Like, what do you really like? And I said, well, I'm pretty good at like making websites and, and like entrepreneurial stuff. That was that was always my thing. It's like, oh, maybe you should focus on that, Nick. Like, so he kind of like subtly suggested to me, like, Nick, maybe it's you're good at focusing on those other things. 
And I, and I took it to heart. I think on the train ride home, I just cried. I was like, what's going on, man? I trained so much. It didn't happen. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to try again. I'm going to test myself again. So by May time, the next following month, um, this is before West Ham moved into their, uh, to the Olympic stadium. They used to have this stadium called Upton Park, a very famous club. That an, there was another kind of open tryout there. This time, guys, after this April failure, this time um, it worked really, really well. I scored, I think, uh, I scored a goal and made two assists. I thought in my time on the pitch, I like, I'm definitely going to get a call back this time. Like I killed it on the pitch today. Like this was a remarkable improvement. No phone call back, got nothing. And then in later in that month, another tryout, I thought, okay, this is going to be the time. I'm going to play well again. Didn't play so well, but anyway, I thought I played decent. Didn't happen. No phone call back. So guys, what do you do in this situation? I really want to ask you, what do you do? Do you, I've got like all this feedback. The coach is saying, Nick, what else are you good at? Like, you know, I didn't, I, no coaches noticed me at, at these trials. Like I'm getting nothing here. These are real pictures of me at these trials, like actual pictures at these trials. Like nothing's happening for me. What do you do? Do you, do you say, do you ask yourself like, look, maybe this is not for me. Um, maybe that coach is right. You know, what do you do? And I'm just looking at the chats here to see if anyone, to what, what people are actually saying here. Um, give me a sec. I can't actually, can't actually see. So Ben, if you can, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the shout if anything comes through chat. Okay, cool. Anyway, I want to ask you guys that because I think this is a common thing that all players go through. Like you go to yourself, you know, what do you do in this, this time when you're getting rejected, rejected, nothing's coming. You put in this training, nothing's coming. What do you do? Is this a good use of my time or not? And, you know, so I, I, yeah, go on. Anton said, keep trying. Keep trying. And okay. Jordi said, you keep knocking at the door because eventually someone will open it. Man, these guys have really been really been trained the train effective way. Yeah. <laughs> and Gabriel said, keep on trying and training. Okay. And I think, guys, like, uh, I think it's easy to say that, but I know for all of us, when you do get these moments, you know, whether it's for a minute or a day or a few days, you do get this feeling like, you know, I'm doing the prayer hands here. It's like, you know, what do you do? Like, do, am I really good enough? And I think every athlete goes through this. They really ask themselves this question. And for me, I just thought, I thought back to these times. This is what really kept kept me going through this time, guys, With when there's no phone callbacks, nothing. I was like the patient side, because if we come back, uh, 10,000 hours, guys. And how many hours was I on at this point? Maybe like, I think I did the math in my head. I was like three and a half thousand, four thousand hours. So I was like, oh, mate, I'm not even 50% of my potential yet. So it's like, all right, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to understand that however long I go on this path, it's going to be up and down road. And I'm going to love the downs. I'm going to love the ups. I'm going to love the failures. I'm going to love the bad matches. I'm going to love the times I don't get a call back because all these things I can use for feedback. I can just always ask myself, what can I do better? What can I do better? I didn't score in this match. Okay. Why didn't I score? Or this coach didn't rate me. Okay. Maybe that's the coach's issue or maybe I didn't get on the ball enough. How do I get on the ball more? So I just looked at it as a, as a journey and I got myself back up. I said, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep assisting. I'm going to keep doing my practice. I'm going to keep up that 20 hours a week because all I can do at this point is just keep improving, getting better. One, one thing that I did, one big learning, one major learning, and I think all of you guys will, will go through this. As you get to the higher levels, as I tested myself at these levels, guys, one piece for me that I, I kept getting back was decision-making. You, you need to be better at decision-making. You need to make more of the right decisions. You need, you need to know where to pass. You need to know when to make runs. You need to know how to create space. So this is where I literally, as part of my training, I started watching a match every day. I like downloaded a match every day on whatever online website I could find. Or if you guys are in the UK and you have like BT or Sky, usually you, you, you got replays of games you can kind of watch. And I, I'm like, I get my notes out and I write down 
okay, what was Luis Nani doing in my position? What was Ronaldo doing in my position? Um, what was uh, what was Rooney like? Whoever play it was like, what were they doing that I could see that? Okay, ten seconds before the before they got the ball, how were they getting the defender off balance? How you know were they running into space and coming back? Um, five seconds before Ronaldo scored a goal, what was his movement like in the box? Was he taking a defender one way and the other? And I would just study and analyze the people that played in my positions and just looked at what they did off the ball. Because guys, again, for your notes, 89 minutes of the game or you know, the majority of the game, you do not have the ball. You are not touching the ball. So what are you doing the other 89, 88 you know, minutes that you don't have the ball? Like what's it's it's all about your movement. It's all about your positioning. It's all about what you're doing when you don't have the ball. So this is one thing that I really, I really studied. And about six months later, I um I made this highlight video. And um I was a new and improved Nick. I was stronger mentally. I knew I was going on this path. So nothing could phase me, you know. If a coach said I wasn't good or not good enough, I was like, whatever, part of the process, dude. It's just part of the process. And six months later, I, um, I, I, put, I put this highlight video out. It was sent to college coaches in the US. And um, I, got, I started getting all these offers for scholarships. People saw that in these videos and the game highlights and the trials and everything. Oh, wow. Like, well, that's what they were saying, guys, not me. But like, oh, wow, maybe he, he's good enough for, the, um, for this team in the US. And then I started getting these college scholarship offers and then like, people offering like full scholarships. Um, I actually got like 10 scholarship offers, which were worth like quite a lot of money at the time. And um, and so that's a very positive thing that happened. I was like, I just got offered like scholarships to play in America. And you know, like a year earlier, like I was nothing. Um, fast forward a bit more, a, uh, uh, this video got sent to the, the Australian, I'm Australian, the Australian national team um youth coach his name was uh Jan and Jan had seen my video and he said Nick um you're welcome to to join in our training so these are actual screenshots guys because I just want to show you like this is real like you guys might receive the same emails or texts or messages one day and I just want to show it's real like Jan was like come come um come to the youth uh youth national team training base see how you get on so cool I went to the new training base. What I saw at the, in the national team, the Australian national team was just their schedule and what they did every day. Um, I don't know if this is very clear for you guys. You can take a screenshot of this, maybe have it in your notes, but you could, you could see how breakfast was organized for the players Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day there was like a plan. And, you know, Monday was strength and conditioning. Tuesday was strength and conditioning and a training. Wednesday was uh was training. So and there was rehab. There was all, all these things. And I thought, okay, this is the the schedule of a of a pro. They did video sessions. So they're also analyzing their own matches and stuff. Um so I thought, okay, while I was at the national team, you know, when I was talking guys earlier in my presentation about like how I would really love to like get that camaraderie between the players, like for me, this was like, wow, I'm with the national team. Like 18 months ago, guys, I was nothing. Like, I just had this goal, this belief, this desire to get improving. And I had this visualization in my head, like, what? how cool would it be to, like, get in the dressing room knowing that, you know, the players here, the players around you, this is a lifestyle. And this is what I could experience in the national team. It's like, boom, you know, the players are there for football. You're playing on the best pitches, the very best pitches. You got the <laughs> the best balls, the best, like, uniform, the best kits. Like, it's a real professional thing. And after the, after the three trainings, um, Jan and Gary, who was uh, the assistant coach of Jan at the time, these guys are, by the way, all, a lot of people I've mentioned in this presentation, guys, like guys like Mark Robinson at Wimbledon, he went on to like be the actual coach for Wimbledon and now he coaches Chelsea. Just, to, just a side note for, for you guys taking notes right now, like everyone that you come in contact with with football in the next ten, five, 10, 15 years, they're going to be doing big things. So make sure that you're nice to people, that you're never a douchebag because these people are going to end up doing 
big things, very big chance. Okay. Um, but Jan basically set me aside in the dressing room after a few trainings with the national team. And I thought like, yeah, I can, I can compete at this level. And Jan was like, all right, well, Nick, you got to be in the level of, of, of um, these two players. These two players were like big play Australian players playing in the Dutch league, like they're top of the top. It's like, you got to be in this level to like get in the, the team now. But what Jan was saying, was like, I think you can play for an A-league club. I, th I think I can help you out with getting to an A-league club. And A-league is a top division, top division in Australia. It's, it's the professional league. So when Jan said this, I was like, wow, this expert just said like, wow, you can play for A-league club. So it was like a stock. My stock had just, you know, risen. I got that validation now that after all this training, all this maybe 1,000, 1,500 hours, 2,000 hours of additional practice I put in, boom, my stock had risen. And this guy was saying I was good enough to play A-League. I was like, wow, great, cool. The system was nodding his head, great. Um, so that just gave me the incentive and the spur to keep improving, getting better. And I'd like take inspiration from that schedule that I saw in the um, um, in the national team. And then I made like more of a like concrete, like better schedule. This is what I'll do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I wanted to live and train like a pro footballer, like what I'd saw in the national team. So that just spurred me to get, get better. Um, so I kept training, kept training, kept going, kept improving, kept going, like working on my strengths, working on my weaknesses. Um, you guys may, may have seen John Moses. If you ever come to the Train Effective camps, you'll probably meet him. Uh, but this was me, like someone who started really mentoring me. And Mo used to be like, John Moses here in the right, used to be like a, a pro player in uh, Hungary. I was living now in Hungary. And um, he like took me under his wing and just like tried to get 20% more out of more out of me because I was doing so much training alone. So he really like took me under his wing. And Mo didn't have like a great facility to train at. This is the, this I kid you not, this is the actual photo I took from my phone. This is the actual uh, grass place that me and Mo trained at. Mo would literally drive me here because there just wasn't anywhere else to train or it was like very expensive to train there. So he just took me on this like kind of side abandoned uh, field, a lot of holes and stuff. But anyway, it is what it is. That's what we did. And Mo just did the most intensive, crazy trainings you could think of. Like he pushed me to the absolute limit. So when you see coach John Moses on the um, train effective app or at the train effective camps, this guy is the most intense coach I've probably ever come across. Um, he's the most nicest guy, but he pushed me so much. And he got that 10, 20% extra out of me. I kept downloading and anal analyzing games. And then I eventually got this trial at this like professional um, Hungarian club that Mo got me to. And um, I thought, okay, I'm as fit as I've ever been. I'm as confident as I've ever been. And I got to this uh, Hungarian club which was like maybe two hours drive outside of Budapest, which was the capital. So Mo dro drove me there and I, I got to this table and then I got to this big table, like you see with these people here. And there's like the, the coach, there's the president of the club, there's an assistant coach, there's another assistant there. Like, and they're kind of just all around the table waiting for me. And I was like, okay, wow, this is new. I've never had people at a table, like wait for me. I feel like this is like a job interview or something. Anyway, I go to the table and the, the guy is like, um, the main coach was like, hey, Nick, uh, I'm, I was 18 years old at this time, okay? So I was like an adult now. He's like, Nick, I want a starting 11 player here. We're, we're a second division club, but we get the best youth players in Hungary. Um, players that are playing in the national team, they're coming to play at this club. So you need to be at that level. So the coach is like, yeah, we need a starting 11 player on the level of a youth national team player. So that's what you need to be, Nick, if you're going to make it in this team. So I thought, okay, quite a challenge, but let's go, right? Let's do this. And there were players that you see pictured here that were like playing in this club, okay? So I thought, okay, I mean, let's just go back, guys. I was like, this was, I have to go way back. But, you know, I look, I was like this. I was, <laughs> I was like this. So this was like, all right, you're playing with these guys now. 
uh, all right, this is what it is. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to let this phase me. I'm going to go real all in. Um, I put in thousands of hours of, of practice by now. This is this is a chance for me to really see where I'm at now. Let's give it our all. Let's give it our best. Let's go. And um, we, I had a few good trainings. I had three or four very good training sessions. And then came the match. And the match, we played a friendly match against another opposition. And the coach said to me, Nick, you're going to start this match. You know, let, show me what you got in the field. And then I think I had the best match that I've ever played in my whole life. Um, I scored a goal, made a lot of chances. Um, I think we ended up winning the match 2-0 maybe. So me and another guy scored, but had a really good match. And then coach said to me, okay, Nick, um, he, we, we took the bus home, a bus, bus back to the club after the game. And then um, the, next, the next day, actually, the coach brought me in and said like, hey, Nick, we want to speak to you. And then he was like, all right, well, um, we want to offer you a, a contract here. So boom, I was offered the contract to play professionally. Um, and this is the, the title of the, the webinar, guys, today is how to become an am go from amateur to pro level player in 24 months. This is what happened in that space of 24 months. Um, the thing that happened at the Hungarian club, I got this offer. Mo and me decided against it because there were a few weird things in the contract. And I'm not going to get into like a long story about it. Um, but I got that offer. What, what ended up happening is I ended up playing in Australia. I went back to Australia, played in Australia, um, started earning money to play in Australia. I went then got back to Holland, started playing in, in Holland. Um, this is at FC Volendam. So FC Volendam, I think now they're in the first, at the time they're in the second division. I think now they're in the, the first division, but it was like experiences like that, you know, playing against some of the best academy players, best best academy players in Europe, players that have played at Ajax and PSV and these kind of academies at Volendam. Like I was like, wow, okay, I'm competing at this pro level now. Um, and then what that ended up transpiring into was like doing videos on YouTube, like uh, uni on Unisport and all these different things. It really like transpired into... Uh, train effective a lot more and I think what I experienced in my journey with everything that you just got you guys just heard in this story was like all right everything that I've done the last two three years how do we like make into um to something that's accessible for everyone so the fact that you guys are here in this the academy call the fact that you guys are using the train effective app um the fact that you guys are watching the stuff that we post on TikTok and Instagram, it all started with my own journey that you guys have seen. And it, it, it then went into the website. It went into working, working with guys like Rio Ferdinand, who obviously huge legend at uh, Manchester United. Um, you know, when I tell this story to Rio, it's exactly a sim very similar journey that Rio went through. This is the, the story that I just told you guys is exactly the sort of story which every pro goes through, every guy who got or girl that got to the top of their field, they all are the ones that could endure rejection the most, that could set themselves up with a mindset and the framework in their mind that this is a journey, that life is long, that you're always going to have ups and downs. There's never going to be a perfect time all the way through, throughout the weeks, throughout the months, throughout the years. There's always going to be ups and downs, you know, guys, even if you're Ronaldo, look at Ronaldo, look at Messi, look at, uh, look at Ronaldo and Messi, guys. <laughs> They've made it to the top of the top of the top they can be, but yet you can see what Messi is experiencing in PSG, or you can see what Ronaldo is experiencing in um, the Arab world where, yeah, they didn't win the league or he didn't perform as well as expected. So there's always constant ups and downs, guys, throughout the career, whether you make it to the pro level or whether you exceed that and you win the Champions League and you win World Cups, there's always going to be ups and downs. But this is a whole thing. It's just about enjoying the ups and downs and following your heart. Because as you can see here, you guys can see where it's 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 taken myself and taken Train Effective. Um, so same story with Rio. There's Rio and the Train Effective kid. I love to love this. He really represents the brand, that guy. Um, so it's about the 10,000 hours. 
as I was saying, guys, like how this relates to all these, um, how my story relates relates to all these other pros and all these other people is like, you guys might know the story with Odegaard, where in addition to playing with a pro club, he was training four to six solo sessions a week. Um, so that's what he was doing in Norway. So, the, you know, this is, this is true for everyone, guys. You have to put in the extra work. Um, even, even with um, Ronaldo, like when he came to Man United in uh, 2000 and whatever it was, like people really doubted Ronaldo because he like put in, he did all these skills and he was like not being very effective. Um, this is Ronaldo's coach on the left, Rene Mullenstein. Rene Mullenstein was an assistant to Sir Alex Ferguson at Man United. And um, Rene Mullenstein was like, I think Ronaldo got a red card late in the season and um, Rene like had three or four games with Ronaldo where he wasn't playing. So he, they were just working and training all the time. And Ronaldo said to Rene, I want to be the best player in the world. I want to be the best player in the world. So Rene was like, well, if you want to be the best player in the world, you need to score the most goals in Europe. So he, what Rene was like, was like, um, they looked at what zone he could he could score in. So a lot of most goals are scored right in front of the goal. And it's called the zone one area. Okay. The zone one area of the goal, right in front of the goal. So they would look at scoring position. How could Ronaldo get more into the zone one? And how could he be more effective in zone two, which is uh slightly outside the goal? Like how how does his shooting technique need to be? How does um how can he get better at his heading? How can he get better with his weak foot? They looked at this, all this stuff all the time. And then because he had this mindset, he had this goal of improving, improving, improving. That's how Ronaldo scored like one of his most prof- prolific seasons um, ever in Europe. And they won the Champions League uh, in, in Man United. Um, Rio Ferdinand, again, he made, he had this story of Ronaldo where like when Ronaldo first came to Man United, like he didn't have a good shot. Like his shot went everywhere. Like he had power, but no accuracy. So what Ronaldo used to do after training, he used to literally put ankle weights on his feet. And, you know, Rio or uh, Gary Neville or Rooney or whoever the Man United teammates were at the time, they just kind of went back to the changing room. Ronaldo stayed on the field, put the ankle weights on and started doing stepovers so he could get faster feet. You know what I mean? And then some of the videos you see of old Ronaldo, you see like how fast his stepovers were, right? And again, it came from the ankle weights. It came from the extras that he was doing on the field. It came from the people that were doubting Ronaldo, saying, oh, this guy's like full of full of, uh, full of, of power and tricks, but like no execution. But Ronaldo kept working, kept working, kept working. And he bamboozled people. Um, and Ronaldo still did that at Juventus. I'm sure he still do. I think he still does. I've seen stories about him still doing that in uh, Saudi Arabia. Harry Kane is the same same guys. Like he's always the first to get into training. He's the one that does the extras. He's working on his penalties after training. Like this is no this is no accident, guys. This is no accident. If you put in the work, the results will come. If you put in the work, the results will come. When I talked about my story with download downloading and analyzing the games, it's like that's everything that that players do now, if you watch the all or nothing series, you see how much time they spend in the video room, how much time they spend analyzing their individual performances. It's why on the train effective app, you have the learn section guys, that learn section in the train effective app is like gold. If I were you guys, I I would watch every single video on the learn tab, like three times because so much of football is decision-making. What is in What is in your head? Like, again, make it as a note. Okay watch every video in that learn section, watch every single video on the, the tactical section is so, so important to the development of your game, whether you're in Vietnam or in, in, um, in Texas, like it's, it's so key. It's so key. Um, the, these are some old examples guys, but like Wayne Rooney used to, you know, before the world cup start, he would take trainers on him on his holiday. So he could get a head start on the world cup. Like Alexi chances when he was really good at Arsenal, um, like he would do extra runs on the pitch. Like, but it's just like, it's just everything you see in the app, guys. Like Lukaku, when he was the top guy at uh, Man United, the top guy, one of the top guys in the Premier League, 
the, the, a real quote, he, which he said. He he said Lukaku would watch every single game in the Premier League. He would go, go home after training, and all he would do was just watch the Premier League, watch games, like analyze games, study and learn other strikers' movements and learn like how they were moving, how Ronaldo was moving, how um how the top strikers were moving, like, and then he just incorporated that into his own game. Um defenders he was studying other defenders and he was thinking okay my next opponent is going to be um whatever jamie carragher at liverpool so how does jamie carragher move like how's he defending um like is he weak on his left side is he weak on his right which which direction can i take him if i go one-on-one -on -one? he was just studying and studying and studying the, these guys 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 if you want to be the the best in your field if you want to be the best in football you want to be the best you can very you can be just take a note out of Lukaku's book, take a note of all these top players. Like when they go home, they're not just sleeping or like scrolling through Instagram. I mean, sure, maybe they are doing that for 30 minutes a day or an hour a day, but they're really, their focus is to be the best they can be. And that's why Lukaku is watching those matches. That's why Ronaldo is doing the ankle weights. Why Ronaldo is, is in the gym. While the Ronaldo, Ronaldo hardly ever, ever gets injured because he he takes so much care off the field of his body. That's how much they want to get better, to, to improve and really have that effective mentality. So like I said, guys, like in the app, you have all the, the learn videos that, that, you know, put a goal for yourself that you want to watch um, three learn videos a day. And then you watch them before training so you can... You can really take the learnings and take notes. And because you do them just before training, you try one or two things that you learned in the videos onto the field. So you're applying it in real life, okay? Um, you, have, you have top people in the learn videos, guys, on the app, which, and, and in the academy as well, which are like top, like, like these people are training first team players at top clubs. So the, it's no different from like, them teaching you something, it's no different from them sitting next to Virgil van Dijk or um, or William at Fulham or whoever it is, an England player, where they're, they're going through these things one-on-one -on -one with a player about how their touches were or where they could move, or all these things. It's there for you on the app. It's there for you in these academy sessions. This is why we created it. So, guys, it's all there for you. The trainings are there for you. Um, the tracker is there for you to keep setting those goals, keep keep doing better. When I talked early in this presentation about videos that really motivated me, a lot of those same videos are in the mentality section of the app. Um, so, so take a look at there. And so if any of you guys are coming to the camps, we'd love to see you there. But that's really it, guys. Um, that is the story. And um, I hope you guys like got something out of this. Great. Cheers, well, well done. Guys, guys. Stay Cheers, all of Thank you. One, one Thank thing you. that we should, we should really get people to say is we don't, we don't do this these days, but stay effective. Because everything we've talked about in the presentation, guys, if you've been taking notes, it's been all about staying effective. This is all about training effective. So when we're, when we're signing off, it's to stay effective. Okay? So stay effective, everyone. <laughs> Cheers, all later.